Welcome to the Enterprise Architecture Advanced. The goal of the advanced level is to provide knowledge on how enterprise architecture can be used in customer relationship management and product, service and project portfolio management and also to provide skills in enterprise architecture creation using a pretty sophisticated enterprise architecture modeling tool, ADO IT Community Edition. The module at the advanced level is organized in two parts. The first part is about usage of enterprise architecture in customer relationship management and in portfolio management. It ends up with short quiz, which will take for you from 5 to 15 minutes. And uh, the second part is about constructing enterprise architecture models and analyzing these models in the ADO IT tool. And it will take around two hours for you. I suggest that you scroll back and forth this presentation when you use the tool so that it is easier for you to achieve the result. You can also use uh, PowerPoint slides, uh, which doesn't include a video. Before we continue, I just remind our basic abbreviations that EA stays for Enterprise Architecture, EAF for Enterprise Architecture Framework, ADM for Architecture Development Method, and also we have no, new uh, acronym CRM, which uh, stays for Customer Relationship Management. And now we can proceed to the first part of Enterprise Architecture Advanced. As we already discussed in the basic level, the artifacts in different enterprise architecture frameworks are quite similar. Therefore, here we will speak mainly about the artifacts and we will not talk about specific enterprise architecture frameworks. Now let us see how the enterprise architecture is related to customer relationships management. So CRM and enterprise architecture in the first sight might be pretty different things, but when we are thinking that CRM is a process that belongs to operational processes of the enterprise, as it is stated, for example, by American Productivity and Quality Center process classification framework, then we can already see the place of uh, customer relationship management in the enterprise architecture. And uh, as a process, it uses enterprise resources, it uses and provides data, it is related to enterprise goals, etc. So, here you can see that there is representation of a fragment of enterprise architecture, which involves process develop CRM strategy, also the process plan and manage customer service operations, measure and evaluate customer service operations. And there are some sub processes like manage customer service requests and inquiries, manage customer complaints, plan and manage customer service workforce. Uh, here we can have another uh, some processes like measure customer satisfaction and inside of it is analyze customer complaint data, analyze social media data. These are all different things which we do in enterprise uh, customer relationship management. The question now arises how these relate to other elements of enterprise architecture. So the processes are here and there are many other elements around. Let us see these relationships. For example, the process develop customer relationship strategy will belong to strategic goals or will refer to strategic goals of the enterprise. The result of activities here will produce some data objects like suggestions for product improvement, which can be used in other processes. Also, this plan and measure, measure customer service operations will need some uh, business objects like uh, data about human resources, data about customer complaints. Looking further, we can see that for analyzing social media data, we will need some applications for media monitoring. Also, for this 
process measure customer satisfaction, we could use some uh, customer relationship management software. And this software will need specific data, uh, which is similar to the data which is um, provided by these and used by these processes. Looking at the enterprise architecture, we can ask the question how we can improve it. For example, maybe if we have this customer relationship software, we have some kind of capability, uh, functionality of this software, which is not used in our processes. Maybe it is so that we are twice representing data, one and the same data. Maybe it would be easier to relate these data together in, in some separate database. Maybe it would be possible to relate these two applications, which will, would give, um, give us some synergetic effects. So also at the technological level, we could find some possibilities maybe to relate via CRM server this functionality to this process. Maybe it would be good to provide new service for relating media monitoring with geolocation technology of CRM software. But for this, we would need to establish new network, which currently doesn't exist. And if we decide that this is a good idea, then of course, again, we would develop new services for fulfilling a possibility to use capabilities of the software in specific processes. So from the things which we considered, we can see that enterprise architecture can be quite useful in CRM because by considering enterprise architecture, we can ensure good relationship between CRM processes and organizational goals. Also, we can ensure well understood and well supported cooperation between CRM and other processes. For example, we have this product development process. We also can ensure well established software support for CRM. And we can seek for good enterprise architecture integration possibilities for CRM to lower down the costs of customer relationship management. Now let us try to understand how enterprise architecture is related to portfolio management. When looking at the possibilities to use enterprise architecture for portfolio management, we first consider what is the goal of portfolio management. So it would be manage the life cycle of assets to reduce risks. Uh, it would be manage interdependencies between portfolios. It would be maximize IT return on assets. So to see how this is related to enterprise architecture, we will consider several portfolios. We will consider product portfolio, service portfolio, and project portfolio. So let us start with product portfolios. For product portfolios, one thing which is important it is product model. And we would think about relationships of product and its constituents to all relevant architecture elements, like product owners, like customer segments that use the product, like product delivery services, like customer data concerning the product. Also, we could use enterprise architecture elements to show product lifecycle descriptions by enterprise architecture means. And also we could consider possibility to analyze impact of changes in the product or impact of introducing new products on other elements of enterprise architecture. So let us see a small example. Here we can see that um, there are some Colibri products. For example, for our enterprise architecture, we have enterprise architecture introductory, enterprise architecture basic, enterprise architecture advanced. And also there is another course, which is um, um, advances in wireless technologies and there also there are these three uh, parts or three levels of this module. So and here we can see that there is content provider, uh, 
a content provider for uh, for for this product is RTU, which provides this service of production of this product, and for uh, another course uh, module, there is Hamburg University of Technology, which provides service for developing this module. This is, of course, only a small part of the Colibri products, uh, but we can represent them in enterprise architecture. We can use different views on the products, like um, there can be some course combinations for one student, which, for example, include enterprise architecture introductory and all three things from uh, advices, advances in wireless technology. So we will have a possibility to represent some choices from for students. And we have an opportunity also to show different services which go together with the products or are included in the products. So, for example, if the students are taking uh, takes these uh, modules, then it uses Albo University Learning Management System services for Colibri, and these services include Moodle services. And we can show that different students can have different products of enterprise architecture. Now, service portfolios. About service portfolios, when we think about service portfolios, we can think of service model, which can be represented by enterprise architecture. And we can think about relationships of services and their constituents um, to all other enterprise architecture elements, such as service users, service providers. We already saw it in the previous slide. Processes that are, that are supported by services data used as inputs and outputs of the services. Also, we can think of service orchestration variations, and we can think about possibility to analyze impact of changes in service portfolios. Here, you can look at different types of services. These are business services here, which are provided by specific business processes. These are application services, which are provided by applications. And these are technology services or infrastructure services which are provided by specific devices and operating systems. Now we can see here some interesting things with respect to services. There can be originally made services, there can be services which are outsourced, and uh, these services can be acquired via different interfaces. So there are model services. And, um, Moodle services are used by Alberg University Learning Management System, but also they are used by Riga Technical University Learning Management System. So this is Alborg University services of Moodle which are used there, and these are Riga Technical University services. And you can see that while they are similar, so they are still a bit different. First of all, the number of services is different. So there's a choice which service to use and which to do not use. And also the outlook is a bit different. So different service interfaces are used. Moreover, there can be also some additional services. For example, in RTU learning management system, there is originally made service, which gives an opportunity to upload new file. So we could represent easily all these things in the enterprise architecture and could easily distinguish between different types of interfaces and different portfolios of services. Thinking about the possibilities of usage of enterprise architecture for a product and service portfolio management, we can see that Enterprise architectures gives an opportunity to ensure that the products and services meet goals of external and internal customers. Uh, they, enterprise architecture makes it possible to be realistic in proposing new services and products. 
and it also gives an opportunity to show IT impact in product and service creation, management and delivery. So we can summarize that enterprise architecture for product and service portfolio management can be used in the following ways. It gives an opportunity to ensure as that the products and services meet goals of external and internal customers. It makes it possible to be realistic in proposing new services and products. It also clearly shows information technology impact in product and service creation, management and delivery, and it might give an opportunity to estimate risks of introducing new products and services. And now let us talk about project portfolio management. First, how do we represent a project in enterprise architecture? We use for this, this implementation and migration extension. And here, when we try to get from one state of enterprise architecture to another state, we use the notion of project. So to uh, get over this gap, we need a project to be implemented. When we think of all of these things with respect to portfolio project management, then we can define portfolio management in terms of enterprise architectures. This gives for us a possibility to see how our intended projects will impact one another. And it also will give an opportunity to decide upon the most suitable project portfolio. So for getting from as is enterprise architecture to to be enterprise architecture, we would have some project portfolio, uh, which would include, for example, software development, infrastructure development, process development. This might be also new business model, if you wish. So project portfolio actually shows the gap between two enterprise architecture states. And when we use this enterprise architecture language or artifacts, then we can be more clear about impacts and relationships between different products which have to be developed or services which have to be developed, which refer to specific project portfolios. And this is the end of the first part of advanced level of enterprise architecture. And now you are welcome to take the quiz and then proceed to the second part.